Uh, just, just a moment. Let me just see where this is recording. Okay, I think it's recording already. Yep, it's on the screen. <laughs> okay, okay. That's great. Okay, so let me just... Uh, good day, everyone. Welcome to the first episode of Silakbo, the backstories behind these stories this year's author's interview. So it's the love month, guys, and I hope everyone's had a great Valentine's times and i do not mean just the romantic dates that you've had but even the time spent on your own because really what better love there is other than the love we so brave, bravely give to ourselves so all the love all the kinds of love deserves to be celebrated and that's why we're here and we're going to talk about that today with our interview with one of our silakbot writers fiona hi fiona so how's your week going it's nice to have you here <laughs> Uh, yes, thank you. I'm, I'm doing well. But just to um, correct, I was a contributor to Silent Nights. So. Oh, okay, okay. So <laughs> it's the story about the Christmas, right? The Christmas during the pandemic and the holidays. So, so just um, a background first. How, how do you feel about the month of love? Because it feels like a holiday too for us, right? How's your February going? Yes, uh, thank you for asking. Well, February has been surprisingly well. Um, actually, we celebrated my mom's birthday so just last week. So that was a nice surprise. And I think it's just a reminder for us that love is always in the air, regardless of whether it's February or not. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So since you said that you are a contributor of The Silent Nights, because um, Indico released two anthologies, The Silakbo and The Silent Nights. So the first one is all about love and it's all about, you know, how we experience love in different forms, maybe friendship. And The Silent Night, it's about, um, it's about how we celebrated the holidays during the time of the pandemic when you know everything every everything shut down we were forced to isolate ourselves so how do you feel during that time during that moment um well i think there's a consensus among everyone that the pandemic was a really difficult time for us it took everyone by surprise and um when the pandemic happened of course it was a time of um a sudden change in our lifestyle. Mm -hmm. We were suddenly indoors and there were a lot of people getting sick and some even passing away. So it's kind of a difficult time for us to find love in the very least. But um, I think that um, that entire ordeal has taught us the value of love. You know, um, you know, being stuck indoors with your family has encouraged us to you know set aside our differences and you know since we're living together to just really live in harmony and you know accept each other despite our differences and it really extends even beyond the family you know even in work like for example i i um i'm not a student so I, i'm an office worker and it has really taught me to um see the value of online virtual communication like before i would look down on that like it's totally impossible to be in class or have a meeting but you know the virtual space has um, opened up the doors to you know opportunities like this you know and um reaching out to people that i would not be able to talk to before and i think that in itself is like an, a pathway or like an avenue to be vulnerable and tell stories and show love. So it's been a difficult time, but it has also opened up the channels to embrace and show love in a different medium, which is through virtual platforms. That's true. And it also made us realize that, you know, love is possible even from a distance because during that time, we were really stuck inside our homes, inside our rooms, and it's hard to connect with other people. And um, to be honest, I think during that time, there's a lot of people who broke up. And, and yes, I think I, I'm one of them. <laughs> oh, so how did you feel during that time? Was it like a super difficult time? What what was your, you know, medium in which you were able to release those emotions that got you feeling stuck or kind of lonely during those times of pandemic? Yeah, um, well, you know, um, I, I got out of a relationship like last year and we also mm -hmm. kind of got together during the pandemic. So that was a ah. good thing to, you know, like finding love in a hopeless place, stuff like that, pure Rihanna. But yeah. um, 
unfortunately, it also had to end. And what did I turn to? Well, I um, turned to myself. Like it was a time for introspection. It was a time to meditate and really consider what I really wanted because I was having a lot of time with myself because I was stuck at home. So I did turn to myself, which is something that I don't often do. I'm always like running to other people with my problems. So I, I, I um, fell into the sweet embrace of my own arms, but I also um, got into writing and that's how I actually ended up published on Indigo. So I would sometimes write write poetry uh, about my, my heartbreak and and all of the other heartbreaks that happened in the past year since Silent Nights. You know, I have it right here for fun. Uh -huh. It's it's you know it's about um, you know um, dealing with that experience of grief. You know, so uh, writing was really instrumental in helping me um, process my emotions and really get it on paper you know because sometimes a lot of our emotions are like stuck in our head or we don't really know how to express how we feel but like writing was really um a medium for me to really um express like the things that i keep locked away so it was a very cathartic experience that helped me also move on from that breakup that happened yeah. mm, that's that's a really good thing right because sometimes writing can be a bit burdening because it's so hard to just decide on what you want to write about and it's so hard to just you know put out those words that you want to say because as writers I think we have this tendency to be perfectionist like it's so hard for us to just to just create a whole piece out of a scratch because we keep thinking oh I don't want to continue this because it's not going to be perfect so what was running through your mind when you first wrote your piece for the silent nights like um was there a time when um, when you felt as if it's so hard to just decide on what topic you want to write about, like maybe there's a lot of choices that you, a uh, topic or a character, a person that you want to write about, and what made you, um, you know, lean towards this specific topic? Like, what made you decide, okay, this is what I'm gonna write about? Absolutely, good question. Um, you know, since I actually work as a I have like 10 years of experience as a content writer and editor. So what you were describing, like the whole struggle of not knowing what to write or where to take inspiration from mm -hmm. and to just get words on paper has been a daily struggle for me for the past decade. So I know that feeling quite well. Um, but um, for me, the process has always been to um, just write what I know. I think there's a philosopher who said mm -hmm. that right you know, but I cannot attribute the, the credit to that because I don't know who it was. But um, I think it starts with um, something that you are very familiar with. Writing something that you have experienced in particular is really a good place to start. Mm -hmm. And whenever I feel like um, lost or confused on how I want to write or what I even want to write about, I always look inward, you know, and ask myself, what do I want to say? So, um, when it came to my contribution to Silent Nights, um, what really inspired me to step forward and share my story was was the entire experience of grief, you know. Um, when I, I always tell my friends that 2022 was my banner year of grief. Like um, in 2022, I said goodbye to a lot of things, you know, a lot of people in my family passed away, like my best friend passed away, my aunt passed on a month later my cousin fell victim to police brutality my cousin passed away i went through a breakup i left a toxic job so it was really this whole succession of you know unpleasant experience yeah, and like you know it was a lot to take in and i didn't really know you know like just what to do i was yeah, just I can't imagine how you processed it <laughs> yeah. yeah thank you thank you for validating the struggle so, um, you know, um, after all that succession of really unfortunate events, I took it upon myself to talk about it, you know, and um, it really like share my story, not just to get my sad on everyone else and like, but to tell people who might be going through the same thing, whether it's like the death of a family member or a breakup, that there is you know, like hope in the horrible, right? There is some good 
where there is some blessing or some silver lining and all that darkness, you know, and, and I just wanted to uh, inspire other people who may feel lost and hopeless and confused that, hey, you know, I'm, I'm here. And I have so many things that I went through, but, you know, you're going to get through it. And yeah, that that's really when, when I saw the Indigo um, call for submissions, it really like spoke to me. And I said, hey, maybe this is my chance to get oh, my message yeah. out there. Yeah. So yeah, that's what pulled me into this um into this publication. Yeah. Uh, I know that your writing really inspired a lot of people. It gave everyone a lot of hope that there's something good. Maybe maybe not right now, but something good waiting for you, even if there's a lot of things that happen. But you know, I just want to say that I'm really, really proud of you because you know that's a lot to process and uh, tra the tragic things that happen to us. You know, just one tragic thing, it's so hard to deal with it and just imagining that succession of unfortunate things that happened to you. I can't imagine how you, you know, managed to get out of bed in the morning because you know, when this kind of things happen to us, sometimes it just makes you not want to function. Like you feel yeah. as if you feel as if time is not moving and it's it's yeah. kind of frustrating. It's kind of frustrating to see everyone else moving at the fast pace and you see that everyone's doing well, right? And yes. there's just this there's just this thought that, oh, things are going well for them. Time is moving. And for me, it feels like I'm stuck. And yeah. I think that's 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 the hardest thing to, you know, take in that you feel as if you're stuck and you have no idea when you're moving forward. So was there ever an instance, because, you know, everything you've been feeling that's super heavy. So was there ever an instance when you thought of, you know, just letting go of your, of your desire to write? Because maybe it might be, another you know another burden to carry so was there ever a time that you said you thought to yourself okay i, I don't want to do this something like that <laughs> yeah yeah really good question actually yes and not just one time you know multiple times oh, um yeah. you know i am i'm a writer as a in my career you know i am a writer mm -mm. and i've been a writer since not even since graduation you know ever since i was born i've always mm -mm. been myself a writer you know ever since I learned how to use a pencil I've always been a writer so it is really a, a choice for me each and every day to um, to really express myself and get my thoughts into paper and it's not always a pleasant experience you know I'm pretty sure you are familiar with the experience of, of burnout and I, I used to work in a couple of agencies and you know how it is. It's really output based. It's quantity over quality. It's never really about what you write. It's how much you're writing. And mm -hmm. this thing that was really, it was really a time in my life when I didn't really know if I wanted to still be a writer. Mm -hmm. But I, I persevered because I really had this inherent passion to tell stories. And if that was something that I would stop doing, it would be like I would stop existing, you know, that, that thing. So um, even when it gets hard, you know, um, even when I feel like all I do is word vomit, even when I feel like nobody is ever going to read the things that I write for work. I mean, I think I speak for all the writers out there when I say that, you know, um, that it's not true. It's not true. Now, what do you write will not be written because you know the effort that we put into the act of creation um the, the effort will always translate into something much bigger or much more significant later on maybe right now it's not gaining traction you know maybe your mm -hmm. podcast doesn't have viewers maybe nobody's really buying your book right now but we can say for certain if in the future it's gonna be a huge sensation you know like mm -hmm. charles Bukowski is, is an example of <laughs> he, was, he was an alcoholic and nobody really cared about anything he wrote and then when he passed on that was when oh man he's the nice. more greatest writer ever so um i think that even on the days that we feel like giving up and not really wanting to write it's just one day or it's just like one day in a succession of multiple ones and we will all find our, um, what do you call that? Our 
ability to create again and find hope and yeah yeah that's true i really really like the thought and especially sometimes i think we tend to you know not want to write because we think about what if no one wants to read my work or what if i just keep on doing this thing my passion but then no one really appreciates it or that the things that i'm writing no one really um you know take the time to absorb the words and i think it's very important to realize in ourselves that you know sometimes it's not just about impressing people or it's not just about gaining that recognition or acknowledgement that oh you have good writing but even just for a moment that our words reaches even just one person i think that's enough right like even just giving someone hope even it's if it's just one person i think that's enough for us to you know just keep going and going because you know maybe eventually would make it big without us even knowing so i really really like what you've said about that the, the, that example about the writer who when he passed on that's when he got recognized so you you really never know when life's going from zero to 100 right so you know just keep on going until life surprises you <laughs> so after after you've written after you've stumbled upon your topic in silent night what was the most challenging part in getting up to the ending like what was the hardest part about writing that piece for you um right so uh the the most difficult part of writing was re-experiencing the loss oh. you know because um of course uh in in silent night so i i wrote about i mean I, I was telling you earlier about how there was like a succession of deaths in in, in my family and in my circle and i specifically wrote about my tita who passed away last <laughs> august August last year. And uh, of course, writing about the experience meant that I had to relieve the trauma. I had mm. to go back to that point in my life when she was when she was not okay, when she was on her deathbed, you know, when, when she was being put in the ground. And th that's really like um, a really painful and very uncomfortable place to be in especially if you're, you're you're like willing it upon yourself like sometimes it's hard to talk to people and it's hard to like for example to talk about like death but it's so uncomfortable it's so you don't yes, want to talk that's true but you know when when you're actually writing about it you you really like force yourself to be there so it's kind of like this limbo but at the same time, you have to like go through it because there's something that you want to say. There's something that you want to dedicate to this person who passed away. And there are people who are waiting for you to share it. So that was definitely like a very um, draining to some extent experience, you know, having to relive the loss again. And yeah, that was the hardest part for me, actually. But I found that reliving the um experience the grief, yeah and the loss actually um helped me create like a really authentic piece that would you know uh, that other people would relate to and you know and I, I received a lot of positive feedback like i sent it to my friends who were also grieving and they were like oh man that that really spoke to me that was really that was really a powerful piece and it was worth it in the end to like go through that really painful <laughs> reliving of that loss. I really do agree with the fact that it's so hard to talk about that. And especially when 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 you just, you know, when someone offer you their condolences and something like that, it's so hard to react because what are you gonna say? Are you gonna say thank you? Or yeah. when, <laughs> right? Or when someone just you know looks at you with pity and yeah. they just don't know how to react because that is always a heavy topic to talk about and you know it's so hard to think about the people who passed away and just you know just thinking about they're never going to be here again and the realization that the last time you saw them was the last time you're going to see them but you never realized that it's going to be the last time i think that's the hardest part like there's this there's this wish that you know like i wished i hugged you the last time i saw you or i wished i smiled 
I, I smiled much bigger, <laughs> something like that. Yeah. So I really, I really, really understand how you feel. And I think it's true that the most painful part about it is really reliving the experience. And it's really a brave thing that you were able to write about it, you know, that you were able to put that painful memory into paper and you were able to communicate it with other people, even to strangers. And at one point, they're going to read your story and they're going to be like, oh, maybe I'm going through this grief right now. But just like the writer, maybe at one point, it's going to get better, even just a little bit. Because I think I, I really do agree that grief never goes away. Just, you know, it becomes bearable each day. But I think there's still days when it's going to hit you so hard. <laughs> you yeah. know, gr grief, is, grief is like that. It doesn't mm -hmm. go away. We just make space for it. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And um, someday it's gonna hit you so suddenly. Sometimes in the middle of the day, just when you thought you've healed and everything. And then, I think it's a good thing that you put it into paper and you tell yourself now. Oh, at, uh, at some point I felt a little bit better. So maybe today it's bad, but eventually it's gonna get okay. Something like that. So I really, really, really love your perspective on things. I'm so glad that we were able to do this interview. So yes. before we, you know, end this interview or these questions, can you personally tell me what's um what's something about the Silent Nights that you really love? Like how is it different from other books? If you would, you know promote it to the readers or the audience? Right. Um, well, Silent Nights is different from everything else out there because it really <laughs> talks about something that we would rather stay away from in, in, in society, you know. That's true. Death is something that's so frowned upon, you know. We're <laughs> so obsessed with staying young. <clears throat> <clears throat> staying young and you know putting on makeup and looking and having six pack abs and <laughs> if you're past 40 you're, you mean you're already retired and stuff like that and you know and this this very book right here defies that because it, it, it talks about um death as something that happens you know sometimes it we just need to acknowledge something and that is an outcry it's really an act of defiance and silent nights couldn't have come at a better time because you know the pandemic happened and there was a lot of deaths left and right and there wasn't really like um, an avenue or like um, a platform where where we could talk about it it no, was just yeah, about, that's true. but it's just like scrolling on social media and there's a person who died because of COVID and another who passed away because of some other illness or complication. And it's just so much stimuli. It's just, it's, you, do you ever feel that way? Like sometimes I feel that way, like, you know, artistas passing away and then people from my family and then having a breakup. Yeah. And there's like, how do I even process? Like it's full of bad things, right? Yeah, it's, it's like, <laughs> Tamana, it's like oh my god, like I can't, I don't know what to do anymore. But Silent Night is really um, grounding. Like it really helps validate and acknowledge the pain, the pain that is so common and so untalked about. Because it's really common to find a book about heartbreak. Then a lot of people mm -hmm. who go and that's great. I'm not. Uh, I'm not saying that their pain is less or I'm not not to invalidate their pain, but I feel that grief should also have its rightful place. Like it should also be talked about. And there, it's really rare to find like books that <laughs> talk about grief. So, um, you know, I, I really encourage people to, um, to really pick up the, this book it's still available you know even it's about you know grief during Christmas but you know grief happens all year round you know I mean mm -hmm. both of us are dealing with grief I know you, you you've also and my condolences yes. by the way Carla for thank you for your loss um you know um grief is really um, a difficult emotion if not the most difficult one and you know, like grief feels so infinite in the moment. 
you know, when when it, when it hits you, diba? like what you were saying earlier, sometimes it just hits you like a trap. You feel like you're smiling and then shit, the next day, oh my God, I'm breaking yeah. up. And yeah, like, that's super true. <laughs> diba? It's like, and there's not enough media that, that talks about that, right? And mm-hmm. um, so... Ultimately, yeah, I'm just I'm just really grateful that I'm part of this anthology and to everyone else, you know, like um, if you have the money to spare, you know, like um, let let's support our our writers and artists and let's support each other, you know, um, and make this place more uh, I don't know conducive for like these these um yeah that's so, true <laughs> and I do agree that you know. When with the um, digital automation and technology and all that, we've arrived at this point where sometimes it's so fake in the social media platforms. Like we're just trying to show our very best, but behind the screens we're all yeah behind the screens we're all breaking downs and we don't have enough space to process our griefs and loneliness and traumas. And I think this kind of bad things it's not really talked about because we refuse to we refuse to carry these things or talk about these things because we think that it's not worth talking about. You know, it's not worth dealing with. We want to, you know. I think we have this weird obsession with handling all the heavy things on our own. <laughs> and we're just this, I, I don't know, we're just this lonely people who's trying to find mediums in which we could put out our emotions and just put some words into it so that we could just release those traumas that we've had inside of us. And I think Silent Nights was able to do that. But in a way, it was also like, a message to ourselves while we were writing that oh i think there's still some hope despite all these bad things right for sure <laughs> always right. even though it's really hard to believe there is always hope. that's right even if it's really really hard at the, as of this moment to believe that way i think these kinds of books remind us that i think some days it's gonna get a little bit better. <laughs> so thank you so much for gracing me with your presence for this interview. I hope to interview you again for our next anthology <laughs> because you know there's a lot of anthologies that Indigo is planning and I hope that you continue on contributing because your words are really powerful to give people the message that you want to communicate with them, the you know the hope, the positivity and even if it's not positivity, even just the realism of human experience and how we hope and deal with it so thank you so much for again for um allowing me to have this interview with you again and hopefully i'll reach out again for the next interview for the next anthology (laughs) okay thank you very much i'm very flattered carla yeah i love talking to you thank you so much for having me okay thank you so much have a great weekend bye great weekend bye-bye take care